Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at how to use Unity animation events to trigger code from the animation itself so that you can trigger code perfectly in time with certain frames of the animation. Um, yeah, we're going to be using this for a jump animation. So let's just get started. You can use this for anything, obviously. But let's have a look at our animator to begin with. Uh, if you don't have these windows open, just come down here and you can open them up. And if you don't know how to make an animator, uh, you should watch our last video where I've set up all of where we're up to so far besides this animator um, state machine which was set up well this exact one wasn't set up but we set up one very similar in a video uh, which I can link up here as well so yeah in here we have a jump animation which is playing our player jump and it's being triggered from the walk and the idle and it's using the condition jump to go into it which you can see here is a trigger. So to begin with, let's just start off by getting this animation playing. So if we open up our script, we're just gonna to want to check for an input. Oops. We're gonna get key down, so we're only checking when we first push the button down. Um, we're going for a key code. And seeing we're going for a jump, I think space is a pretty reasonable button. And so what we need to do is get our anim, which is our animator, which we declared in the last video up here. And we just want to set its trigger, which is called oops, jump. And basically the way a trigger works is it's a bool, which you don't need to turn on and off. So it gets turned on when you call it, and as soon as it's done what it was meant to do, it turns itself off again. So that's all we need to do here. So if we save that, and come into our Unity, let it load, press play, and press the spacebar, now we're getting our jump animation. But obviously we're not getting any um, curve or add force with our jump, because we haven't added any code for that yet. So that would be the next thing. So we come back in and we're gonna to need to add this outside of our update. So we're adding a new public void. Uh, we're gonna call it jump and we're not passing any variables through. So we just leave the brackets empty. And yeah, the reason we've made it public is so it can be called from outside of the script because we're actually gonna call this from our animation. Uh, so yeah, in here, we just wanna get our rigid body, which again, we declared last time. And we want to add force. And we're going to add that force in a new vector three. And we want it to be our move horizontal, then just a jump force, and then zero, because obviously we don't want any movement in the back and forth, um, forward and backwards, because it's a 2D game. And then we'll times that by our speed. And then this will give us a jump, which is at the same speed as our walking speed which is obviously not ideal. Uh, well, a little bit more than our walking speed because we have it set to 20, but we want to then times this again by 20 just to give it a little bit more oomph to our jump. Um, you can obviously set that to whatever you want to change the height of your jump. So now we have a bit of code in here, which when we trigger it, will make the player jump. But because it's not in update, it's obviously not gonna run uh, unless we trigger it. So if we press play now, uh, we still won't have our jump we'll just have our animation playing but here's the whole thing now we can trigger that code from our animation so if we come up to our jump animation and just to visualize it I'm going to drag it onto an object in scene and then we'll come to our animation window and here you can see we have uh, six frames of animation and for the first two the player is winding down or for the first three the player is winding down and then bam he jumps up and then starts falling down and then lands. So we obviously don't want the player to start jumping into the air for these two frames of animation because he's still winding up. And if we just did this jump code in here when we press space, obviously the second we trigger our jump, the player is going to do it. We could also do this by adding a delay with our jump in the code. So we hit space, it plays the animation, delays, and then does the jump. But that's a really really bad solution because then you're relying on timers 
and you need to work out the times of your animations and if you tweak the timing then you need to tweak the code so everything becomes reliant on each other and it's not very good so instead we're just going to delete this object's animator because it's the grass and we don't want it to have an animator and it doesn't have our script on it so our script that has jump that's only on the player so this object wouldn't be able to call jump anyway because you can only call an animation event in a script from an object which has both that animator and that script so if we come up to our player it has an animator and it has player so player well animator can call this script but if you had this script on the environment object and tried to call something from player from the player object it just wouldn't work so you need to have the script which has the code that you want to run from an animation on the same object as the animator that's really important um, but yeah let's come to our jump animation and then in here as I showed before it's at this point where the pl uh, player actually starts jumping into the air so this is where we want to start adding our force so all we need to do is click this little thing over here which has added this little event for us and up here we need to declare the function we want to call and we called our function jump so we just want to write jump same way we wrote it in there and we don't need to pass a float through we don't need to pass anything through because we're not passing any through, uh, anything through to this it's just going to trigger this code so now when the jump animation gets to this point and is on an object which has that script it's going to trigger that code so let's have a look at that and as you can see now we actually get it waiting and then doing the jump and <laughs> to make that a little bit more obvious we'll just grab all of these frames Oops. all of these frames drag them over here grab this drag it over here so now you can see he does the wind up then does the jump cool so let's just make that go back to normal but yeah that's a really simple way that you can trigger code straight from your animation and make your animations feel just so much more fluid because instead of having to guess all your timing or just playing like your code at the same time as the animation starts you can actually trigger it perfectly in time you can build entire games based off this and if you're in unity i highly recommend that you use it for many aspects of your game um, it's incredibly useful for combat systems uh, just for any event basically uh, which is based around an animation so yeah something you definitely want to play around with and you want to learn all the ways that you can use it um, now that I've done this basic introduction on how to get it, like just the basics of it working I might do a more advanced one if it's something you guys would be interested in so if so leave a comment down below asking for that um, if you have any questions or any other videos you'd like to see leave a comment for that as well if you liked the video leave a thumbs up and yeah subscribing always helps because you probably know I'm under the threshold, so it would be nice to get over that 1,000 subscriber count. But yeah, have a nice day, and hopefully this video was helpful.